Hello everybody, welcome on in today to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell, welcome. So glad you're here for an amazing alteration project today. And um, we are gonna do something pretty fun, it's pretty large scale today. So I've got my whole table filled today and can't wait to show you what we're gonna do. So hop on in here and let me know that you're here. Hopefully our broadcast is working. Whoo, crazy. <laughs> Can you tell I've kind of been running around like a chicken with my head cut off today. And all these little flyaways are going <laughs> They're my little radars, my little uh, antennas or, like, or horns, whatever you wanna call them, are just going crazy today. Uh, hello, Miss Darlia, welcome on in. Miss Yvonne is watching, Miss Shelly is watching. Yeah, it looks like our broadcast is working. Hopefully you all can see and hear me okay. Let me know if uh, I can see comments, we'll see. Miss Brenda is watching, welcome. So all this week in Craft on the Clock group here on Facebook, um, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find us over on Facebook. Um, we are having a theme week called Amazing Alterations. And um, it's mostly about taking an ordinary item and giving it a new purpose. Um, so I've got lots of things that we're using today. Of course, it's, hey, Miss Shana, how are you? Uh, so excited I'm seeing comments. Betty from Maine, let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, you guys know, I always love to see what part of the world you're tuning in from. Hey, Miss Gretchen and Sharon, thank you for sprinkling. I appreciate you, friend. Um, it's all about taking ordinary objects, giving them a new purpose in some form or fashion. Well, I've got all kinds of things that I'm pulling out today, but really the biggest item that we're using today is right underneath this uh, sheet of parchment paper. So this is a vintage cutting board, you guys. Um, picked this up several years ago. And uh, it, you, if you're like me, you like, you know, if you like vintage pieces, every once in a while you come across something, you see something and you think, okay, I have to have that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I have to have that. <laughs> Well, that was kind of what this piece was. It was already like speaking to me. Hey, Miss Brenda, I can't wait to show you what we're doing today. Um, so I grabbed this and of course, you know, without having anything in mind, a lot of times it kind of sits and sits and sits for a little while until something kind of sparks, you know, a thought. Well, yesterday afternoon, about this same very time, the idea came to me. <laughs> it came to me and, um, I don't remember now. I think I may have been on Pinterest and saw something and one thing led to another and I thought, that's what I need to do. So I went and pulled out this cutting board. And I mean, it's been used. It's very been, it's been very well used, but it's in pretty good shape. I mean, of course there's normal wear and tear, scratches, dents, discolorations, stains, but that's, you know, you guys know I love that kind of thing. Anyway, hey, Miss Julia from New York. Uh, hey, Miss Tony, how are you? And uh, so I, I thought, you know what? We're going to use this today. Sorry, my microphone is like pinched way down there. Um, we're going to use this today to create a, an amazing piece of wall decor, okay? And it's all going to kind of come together and be tied together with one kind of theme all revolving around kitchen utensils or kitchen themed items but also it's going to have a little bit special meaning today because i am actually using uh, a vintage family photo as a part of this project and also using um, a recipe a printed recipe um, a couple of years ago someone in our family was uh, going through family heirlooms and found a recipe book that belonged to my great-grandmother and my great-grandmother passed away long before I was born in fact she passed away just a few months after my grand after she gave birth to my grandfather um, and so I was never fortunate enough to meet her or know her I've just known her through photos and through um, what kinds of stories that I've heard passed down from you know generation to generation and uh, anyway a person a family member uh, extended family member came across a cookbook that she had a handwritten cookbook that she had put together probably when she was getting married um, because honestly she wasn't married and didn't live like a family life for very long before she passed away 
And so it was probably a collection of recipes that was uh, that she wrote down uh, that was passed down to her for maybe a wedding gift or wedding present. Now my mother has the actual legit recipe book that she you know that my great grandmother had handwritten, and it's you know the pages are so brittle and so tender. And uh, hey, Maureen, how are you? And uh, so you can imagine how delicate that item is. Um, but I always love those kinds of things. But so we keep that kind of preserved and, and you know tucked away so that it doesn't fall apart or become damaged or whatnot. So what I have done is I've had my mom, <laughs> I had her text me some photos out of the book, and I said I'm gonna you know print a couple of these recipes. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna use one in this project today. So I, I did that, I did just that today. Now, my printer is just a regular home printer and I'm out of colored ink, so all I'm printing is black and white. So uh, you could ha use this same idea that I'm gonna be showing you today for something similar, or you may not even use a printed recipe. You could use a sheet of music paper, book, you know, all kinds of possibilities. You'll see where I'm going with it. But the uh, little recipe, here's the, uh, a photo copy, just a printed copy um, of the recipe. So I printed it in black and white. We're going to start by grunging this up slightly because now the real recipe pages were just that. They were all grunged, you know, and discolored and stained um, and just, just perfect, you know. If, in fact, I would love to probably get a, a page out of it and and frame it honestly is probably what I would really like to do so you guys know when I am um, kind of grunging up paper type projects um, for whatever I always kind of go to these little uh, distress oxides and that's what I'm using today this one of course is my favorite one is vintage photo and uh, I'm just gonna go around the edges a little bit and I am gonna cut this recipe page copy down. This is just a tiny portion <laughs> of this project today, okay? So we're gonna have to like really kind of speed along because I wanna make sure that you guys get to see uh, all of this come together. I mean, I have a whole table full of stuff. I can't wait to show you guys. Hello, Miss Maria, happy Thursday. Thank you. I'm slowly kind of getting into the fall groove, you guys. Um, of course, you know, I love doing fall projects but this is the only little section in, in my whole little area here that is fall, but I have to have just a little tiny, uh, just a little tiny spot already ready to go because, you know, I love, love getting ready for fall, but I'm not ready to decorate for fall. <laughs> we're still, we're still in summer mode around here. Don't get me wrong. Um, okay. And I, in fact, this Saturday, you guys, at eight o'clock Saturday morning, central time, bright and early, we're going to be skipping gears over to Christmas in July. My one and only, I usually only do one Christmas in July every year. And I'm doing mine Saturday morning. It's going to be part of an event um, that you guys will want to tune into um, this weekend. It's all day Saturday and Sunday. And uh, I posted the information on my page so you guys could see that. Now, I think I probably went a little heavy on that. Probably shouldn't have went as heavy as I did. Hmm. Yeah, I need a little bit of water. Um, hey kiddos, can you bring me some wet wipes? We're gonna kind of take some of that off a little bit because I got it a little too heavy and it it really kind of hides, the, the handwriting was really faint so I wanna make sure that it shows up. Thank you. All right use a little wet wipe now this this is I've used this th stuff a thousand times guys distressed oxide spray okay um, it is water act reactivate it so you can reactivate it with a little bit of water and so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this wet wipe and just it's, it's very it's just barely damp this wet wipe is and so I'm gonna take it and I don't want it super splotchy I just kind of want to make it look like it has that brown, you know what I'm talking about, that old news, old paper. Good, grungy look to it. And this is actually gonna be pretty close. Without using the original 
recipe paper, the handwritten, <laughs> the cherished handwritten paper. This is, is about as close as we're probably going to get, unless we did like a full color, a color photocopy. Uh, hello, Miss Jojo. How are you, sweet friend? Hope you're doing well. Okay, so <laughs> without showing you all of the other pieces that we're going to tie in here together, let me show you this item that we're going to use right here. Now, this is not a vintage piece, but we're going to vintage it up. <laughs> but this is just a cutting board, um, and it's new. I, I grabbed this at Hobby Lobby. Actually, I grabbed it this morning. Um, but we are going to take this, and we're going to go... I don't know. What are we going to do here? I want to cut this out. Hmm. Okay, let's take this cutting board, and let's put it over top of this recipe, uh, printed recipe. And, I mean, it's kind of hard to do because... You know, this recipe, it, it wasn't perfectly sized for this, honestly. And if I enlarge the image, it still wasn't going to be, you know, it still wasn't going to fit it right because some portion of it at some point was going to be cut off, you know. So really, I'm just kind of going for that handwritten look. And honestly, I'm not super happy with this copy. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of temporarily... Um, attach this today so you guys get the idea but honestly after i'm finished today i will um i'm going to print off a better copy i'm going to probably get some more ink for my printer which was supposed to have been delivered today <laughs> naturally it wasn't i am trying to open my coffee grinch thing you guys oh my gosh what has happened i just had it open a minute whoo that was tough i was trying not to spill it everywhere um, I just kind of, I'm going to use this to kind of wet around the edge here. Um, and honestly, I probably could have done this to um, grunge this paper up. And I do have this sheet of parchment paper down over this um, cutting board because I don't I don't want to I don't want to ruin it. You know, I don't want it to get any extra stains or paint or anything like that on it right now. So I'm putting this over it as a protective layer. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print a better copy of this recipe paper. And um, that way it'll look a little nice. And I honestly, yeah, yeah. I could start to say I could do two sides of it, but we'll see. Because I can't, honestly, I, I, that spray was a little too much. I shouldn't have done too much spray, I guess. Um, that's okay. We're learning as we go here. And um, this printed family recipe, if you guys missed it, belongs to my great-grandmother. If you missed the beginning of our little uh, video, uh, you may have missed that little snippet. And I want to cut this edge off right here, too. Um, but I, it, it, it's covering too much of the handwriting and I want to see that. So I'm going to have to work on getting a better copy of this, but we'll go ahead and go through the motions today so you can see what I'm going to do. But then when I get it good and fixed with the good copy, I will be sure and show you guys so you'll see the difference. Okay, let's just, I'm just pinching this because I like the feathered edge to this paper. It looks more worn. Okay, so here we go. I like that. I actually do like that. Even though I can't see the handwriting, the coloration of it is, is nice. Uh, and I'm still seeing some white paper down here. And it's not too bad. Just to kind of, all right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this spray Mod Podge, guys. I've kind of fallen in love with this spray Mod Podge. And I'm trying to look. I think, I think we're good right there. just kind of want it overlaying that cutting board. So this we're transforming this cutting board into a piece of display art. Um, I love this spray Mod Podge because it dries so much faster, you guys. Uh, it is a little femey, <laughs> if that's such a word. We made it a word. Okay. 
make sure I can get that center and we're just going to rub that down and it is definitely soaking it up I don't know if I sprayed enough honestly and I, this is actually the first time I've used that spray Mod Podge in this fashion so I'm not sure we've got a lot of experimental things going on over here today <laughs> We're just kind of flying by the seat of our shorts today. <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Tony. I'm hoping it's going to come together, you guys. I may have to use my liquid Mod Podge, but we'll see. I'm just going to give it... Okay, I've got this little squeegee. That's not wanting to kind of stick, I think. I might have to just give it a real good soaking, honestly, which is making the handwriting disappear, which is killing me because I want to see that handwriting. This might be a total flop right here, you guys. Live on air. Yeah, it's not going to stick. I think that's more for like a top coat. Not, not good for a decoupage. Yeah, it's not going to stick. Okay, let's get, let's get our Mod Podge. Hold on, you guys. Hold on. We got all kinds of things moving around over here. Hold on, grab the Mod Podge really quick. We want the mat. Mod Podge? <laughs> We're managing, <laughs> sort of, sort of. Okay, now I need a brush. Well, I didn't plan on this. Didn't plan for this. Okay, so we're gonna speed this up, guys. Because we got a bunch left to do. A bunch left to do. <laughs> hey, Miss Brooklyn. Um, it could be, but I think I think it is more for. It says durable clear coating that seals prints. Also for use over paint, lacquer, and varnish. So it should, but I think it's more for like a sealer, more so than an adhesive. So we'll put this Mod Podge on the actual surface. And then once it dries, then we can give it a, well, we can give it a spray then over the recipe page. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so when I come to reprint this recipe with a, a better version, then I could just lay it right on top of it, or I could just flip it over and use the backside. But I kind of wanted to show you. It's not going to be the same if I don't show you at least my idea and what it's all going to, how it's going to come together. Yeah, that's what we needed to do. So now we'll just use that spray to go over it, over the top of it after it dries. That's what we needed. Okay. That was quick and easy. Let's put that back in the drawer. Hop on this for right now. Now, while this is drying, I am gonna wipe extra Mod Podge around the edge because if we don't need it, we don't need it. And that'll just take longer to dry. Okay, so there we go. That's the pretty recipe. Now, you can see where that Mod Podge spray has soaked into around the edges. I don't know if that discoloration, I'm assuming that once it dries, that discoloration will go away. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. This is just a, a minor little uh, point of this little project. I can readjust, oh, my nose is tickly. Uh, readjust that later. So that's not a biggie. Just kind of wanted to show you my thinking behind that. So we're gonna slide this off. I think we're done with the scissors. Um, okay, now, so my idea behind this is that we're going to be using this as a display board. Hey, Miss Mary, hey, Miss Kim. Uh, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this humongous <laughs> vintage cutting board sort of like as a collage board, okay, uh, for a collection of a lot of different items. So here's my thinking. I'm going to probably have to do this upside down. I don't know if I can do this upside down or not. So I've pulled a, sorry, I grabbed my cord. I've pulled some items. I'm going to lay them out on my cutting board and give you guys an idea of how I want to put this together. So I have just a little basket of some greens. Um, lots of different textures is definitely what we're going for. Um, with copy paper, 
copy paper is as long as it's just the thin generic you know just your basic cheap copy paper it soaks it up just fine yeah it works just fine uh, so I'm gonna put this over here all right I'm gonna try to put this all right I'm gonna start from this side and work our way over I do want you guys to see how I put this together and the items that I'm gonna be using have a lot of repeating color elements have we kind of talked about that last week when I showed you guys how I kind of put together my vignettes um, I use a lot of repeating elements not to mention that I wanted to kind of rough up this cutting board which I have a little heating tool here while I'm talking I'm gonna go around the edges and we're gonna sear the edges of this cutting board and kind of get some black worn areas so do you see that right there how we've already blackened that this tool is so cool it, it's used for lots of different things but it's like a little heat um, a wood burner you can use it for a wood burner uh, you can use it to transfer photos to wood and things like that but I'm just going to go around the edges and kind of give it a, 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 a heat some heat to it and what it's going to do is it's going to kind of give it a little bit of a burn you guys uh, and it, it's going to make it look a little more worn and it's going to kind of match a little bit better to our theme of, of vintage look to things so let's go around this while I'm talking so the items that I'm going to be using all have repeating colors to them. Uh, hi, Miss Jeanette, how are you? And lots of textures. So we're going to have some greenery, of course. I always have to have some sort of greenery or natural element. We're going to have browns, obviously. We're going to have some silver, some black, and obviously some creams. Okay, I'm trying to look and see what else. I think that's about the gist of everything that we're going to use now I have pulled together some vintage kitchen items which some are vintage some are not but they may look vintage you can pull things out of your stash things that may have belonged to a loved one or things that you have that you've used forever that you would like to maybe pass down to someone else you could put something like this together of your own uh, make like a family board and put um, you know use a family photo or something like that um, I am going to kind of darken this a little bit right in this area because obviously this is kind of where it's going to be more worn and more used if it were a vintage piece right so I do kind of want some coloring there okay that's that's all we're going to do see kind of blacken that my lights a little strong right there there we go kind of blacken those edges all right, so let's turn this little gadget off because it is super hot and I don't want to melt anything. <laughs> All right, let's lay that right back up there on its little stand. Okay, hopefully that stays there. Okay, now, so the next thing I'm going to use, which is really cool. I've got so many things for you guys. So many things. And let me kind of give this a little dusting. This is... A family photo and I'm going to show you in just a moment I have used this in lots of different areas around my home because I love using vintage photos so this is a photo of my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather uh, I think this was maybe right before they were married or right after they were married so she and, and she did not live much longer after that so um, I'm going to use this sort of at the top right up here because I mean I have to have you know I have a, a a handwritten recipe of hers and I want a photo of hers that will work together with it as well so how am I going to attach all of these items <laughs> to my cutting board hey miss Vicki I'm so glad you caught me too so glad you're here um, and you can see on the back this is just a frame um, and I removed I think it did have an easel on the back at one time but I love using these little velcro um, little command hooks okay they're kind of like velcro but they're really just command hooks and so I already have two on the back of of this one because I've used this in a in another project before so all I need to do is put some matching pieces on the back and this is going to be the way that I am going to secure this to the cutting board so that everything can be removed um, you know, changed out nothing is permanent so I don't want to hot glue anything down uh, you know, I don't want to screw or nail anything down or anything like that. I want to try to preserve the integrity of the cutting board as much as possible, as well as the items that we're going to put on here. So I love these little command hooks for that reason. Now, 
I usually use white command hooks, but I grabbed some black ones today. We'll take a look at those if you want to snapshot that. Uh, they, I just grabbed these at my local, you know, store, Walmart, anywhere, Target, have these. And so I, you just put a little set on the back, and then you'll peel the backing off in a minute when we're ready to stick it down in place, and it holds it right into place. And so you can, you know, it's easy to remove without damaging your surfaces later. Okay, so let me see here. Whew, this cutting board's so large, I hope we can get it all on here. Okay, so now... Um, the next item that I want to use, okay, this is a vintage cheese grater, you guys. Now, I wish that all of these items did, you know, at one time, I wish they were my great grandmothers. They're just not. Um, but these are vintage items that I just love anyway. You know, they all have a, uh, they all have, um, you know, that same feel to them. You can tell they're vintage items. So we're going to use this little grater, okay? Tie-ins, I have, so far I have some woods, some creams, blacks, greenery, and then I'm tying in a silver now. And you'll see how I'm going to use the same repeating elements in the next half of this little design setup, little design here. So I think, I think we're going to go right there with that. I kind of had this laid out before I started, but doing it upside down is a whole new ball game. <laughs> um, okay. The next item that I wanted to use, let me kind of scroll over here. Um, I want to scoot this down to the bottom. Can you guys see? Y'all might have to swipe your comment. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if I can go back any farther. Let's see. Okay, here we go. I want to leave about an inch and a half to two inches of a visual border. Let me show you. A little visual border around the bottom and the sides. You see, like right here on this side, I have about this much. I want to keep the same amount of border around the top as well. And what that does is it creates like a visual frame on your piece. When you're using a surface as a collage board, that's going to help kind of tie your objects together. If I were to put this all the way to the edge, it's not going to look as nice and neat. And your eye, it's just not as pleasing to your eye as if you had. Hey, Miss Jennifer, you're new to the page. Watch. Oh, good. Awesome. So glad you're here from Tennessee. Well, I'm from uh, West Kentucky, so we're not too far apart. Um, so I like to have that little visual border. Now, you can't see the top very well because I am laying this flat. Let me kind of tilt it up. So I would have that little border at the top as well. And I promise it's about the same. It just doesn't look that way to you guys because we're kind of on an angle here. And the same with this little uh, flower basket or just little woven basket. Um, I'm going to leave the same amount. Let me show you. Same amount of eye space and space below that we need. Okay. Um, when we put these little pieces together, you'll see what I mean. All right. Now, I'm trying to think. I have a little vintage cupcake tin, muffin tin. Um, I cannot remember how I have these together, you guys. I might have to turn this around. Let's do this. I'm going to, yeah, let's just turn this around. And once I get them placed, <laughs> yeah, my eyes just work better when it's right side up. <laughs> I'm sure you would be the same way, right? Okay. All right. Much, much easier for me to work. And you guys can probably watch this as I kind of put it together a little bit. So here we go. I'm gonna put those two pieces together there. Ooh, I have some really cool vintage kitchen tools, you guys. And some of them I have not even taken um, the shop tags off of. Okay, I've had this forever. I didn't even know the price tag was still on it because of the way I use it, you don't even see the price tag. So I just left it on, obviously. Okay, um, I think, woohoo. I think I want this one right here. So let's scoot. I remember this just kind of fit right into this space so perfect when I was laying this out and kind of planning ahead. Um, I like that right there. So I have lots of dimension as far as like things that stick up and stick, you know, that are flatter to the surface. And so I think that makes it more interesting as well when you're putting something like this together. So. I want, let's see, the muffin pan. Where did I have that clear? Um, I hmm. 
Hmm. Goodness gracious, you guys. This is like putting together a puzzle. It's just putting things together that... Um, it, it, it really is like putting together a puzzle um, because you kind of look at how the shapes kind of complement each other. So like if this is really wide down here, I want something a little bit bigger and wider up here. You get what I'm saying? Um, and so that's kind of what I'm working with here. All right, let me show you this other little piece that I really like and then we'll start securing it all down the last few minutes. This is just a rain scoop, okay? Um, and this is a replication. It's not a true vintage item. Um, but I'm going to use it in this way, okay? Um, upright. And then I'll put like a, one of those little command hooks on the back right here and adhere it down to my cutting board. But before I do that, look what I'm going to do with this. I have a little metal candle holder that I'm going to put right there in the center. And then, of course, you all know I love these little battery operated little vintage looking candles primitive style candles so that's going to go right there in the center it's going to kind of look like sconce and that is on a timer so um, it comes on for six hours and then stays off for um oh uh, whatever 12 hours 18 or 14 hours 16 hours you know what <laughs> you know what i'm talking about 18 hours and then six hours is that right my brain is like mush after this morning. Um, so I'm going to put that together with a little greenery candle ring. And that's going to go down here on this bottom corner. Love that. So it's going to kind of balance itself out. So let me scoot this over. It's going to be, this is going to have a heavy object over here. This one's going to kind of complement it on the other side. So I'm going to lay it down and then I will put, you know, adhere it all to the board and then pick it up and show you guys all at the last moment. Um, the next thing, we, you know, we can't have something with kitchen tools without a true rolling pin, right? So I'm going to use this at the top and that's going to kind of serve as our, um, just to kind of balance the top. It's all about like visual balance is really what it is. Um, and I know this is so big, it's not going to fit in your screen. So I can't wait to prop it up and show you guys. Um, I do have, see if I can grab them. I've scooted my, my cutting board so far back that I can't reach some of my items. I have some vintage spoons, vintage sugar spoon and a little hors d'oeuvre spoon. These are going to go up here at the top and we're repeating these little silver elements the same as, um, can you guys see that? Let's scoot it over. Um, and then I even thought, and I don't know if I could attach this very well, I have a vintage ice cream scoop, which has our wood tones and another silver element. I thought about using that as well. I don't know if we can get away with that. We'll see. Just some fun little pieces, you guys. Okay, I've got to fit in this little muffin tin somewhere. Somewhere, where's it gonna go? Let's scoot. Okay, I think I think this might work. Or should I? Yeah, let's let's try this here. You can see what I'm doing? It's all about just arranging it to where it looks pleasing to you. And I'm gonna use that little hand grater. We're gonna scoot that little sconce over. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm checking my borders to kind of make sure I have that little visual frame all the way around and I think I think we're good so then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna check to make sure um, that you still you know that you like the placement of all your objects obviously so over here I like to arrange let me show you lines so the, the lines, do you see the line from here going up? All of my items kind of all line up along this visual imaginary line, right? And then I have lines going this way. This line of my, my rolling pin is going to be repeated in the lines that I have here with my spoons and my ice cream scoop. Um, and then of course, we're gonna scoot on over. And these two elements kind of work together, the rolling pin, woo -hoo. Um, and this little gadget, <laughs> I don't know what the name of this is. I don't know why I can't think of the name of this, like a, put, um, 
a ped, uh, pedestal, is that right? I don't know. Um, but these two kind of repeat because they have the same colors and they're also going in the same direction as well. So we have a black object up here and then we have a black object down here. You kind of see how things kind of all work together. It's just amazing how you can put it all together. Um, a vintage towel or hot pad, yes. In fact, Miss Mary, you took my idea. I was going to actually print. You know how I've showed you guys how you can print on fabric, right? Like we did this little feed sack um, last week. We made these little uh, vintage feed sacks. I was going to print something and make sort of like a little mini tea towel to hang on this little cheese grater, which is probably what I will do eventually. Um, but my printer just wasn't quite cooperating with me today. <laughs> so I knew I wanted to get the recipe printed and the rest would all kind of fall into place. But, um, but yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, um, we're gonna take these little, which ones do I wanna do, you guys? I, I'm thinking these are gonna be stronger. And I grabbed these, these are extra large command hooks, command strips, not hooks, command strips. And they're black, so I think black would blend in better. Um, just, you know, your eye doesn't see black. Whereas if I had white on the back of something, you, it might be no, more noticeable. Um, and so these are these are large enough to hold something that is, it says 16 pounds. We don't have anything on this board that's 16 pounds. <laughs> um, oh, I'm missing a comment. I can't, oh goodness, I can't reach my uh, camera either to scroll back up. I'm so sorry, I'll have to go back. So I'm gonna use these command hooks and attach them to the back of these items. Now, honestly, some of these you could probably even cut in half. Let me grab my scissors. This is such a large uh, project today. I'm like a little challenged, <laughs> a little challenged today. So I can cut these in half. So like on the cutting board, I can put on this little mini cutting board here, I can put one at the top of it and then the one at the bottom of it and only you know it would only use use up one command hook or, or i keep saying hook it's not a hook it's a strip <laughs> command strip then that would secure it down okay so now let's take take the this little cutting board is giving me fits you guys it is a slicker surface and it's not wanting to huh you know, what's funny is I might have got a bad batch of command strips because that is not sticky at all. Now that one is, I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit stickier. We'll see, I'll take those puppies back if they're not because they're, they can be a little pricey. And I probably could put, it's not gonna stick to that surface, you guys. That is so strange, okay. Plan B. Let's use this one. I think it's just the surface of this cutting board is a little slick. I might have to just kind of give it a little bit of a quick sand and see. Now these are just flat. Yeah, it's the surface of this wood, you guys. It's too slick. So I'll have to um, sand that down and get a better stick. Okay, so let's go back to this one. I'm gonna use Well, I wonder if these were like left out in the heat and they lost their adhesive sticky powers. Okay, yeah, that's sticking. Okay, we're good, I think. I think we're all right. I'm just scaring me for a little bit. <laughs> scaring me. Hey, Miss Beth, how are you? Miss Cindy and Sherry, thank you all for hopping on and watching today. We are making a ginormous project today with lots of vintage kitchen items and uh, basically it's sort of like a collage board um okay so you see i am taking those little black command strips okay on the back of that um grain scoop putting my little vintage candle with a little candle ring right there and that this is going to go right down here in this little corner Okay, so I'm gonna take my candle out for just a minute so I can push this down and make sure it gets a good stick, okay? 
Now, obviously, if you're going with something permanent, you could definitely use something like E6000. And if I stick with this little project, that's probably what I'm going to have to do. These command hooks, you guys, th these, they're garbage. I don't know what's going on. I've never had command hooks not stick. But these are not wanting to stick. It's bizarre. I'm kind of thinking they're a bad batch. A bad batch. Could be. Okay, let's see if it was tested on this little... Um, muffin pan it feels like it sticks good okay hmm you know what it could be as well is I did kind of clean this board earlier with a little bit of like a lemon polish and I may have to let that soak in before that would adhere that that could be it too on this now I did not do that to this <laughs> I think that's what we're going to have to do, you guys. Well, rats. We only have like two minutes left. <laughs> Our friend Miss Joey from Created in Awe is coming up next in the Craft on the Clock group. I want to make sure you guys can check her out. And let her know that you're watching today. I know she'll have a cute project. She always does. Now that, you know, I think it's the polish that I had to put on here, you guys that I wanted to make sure that it was good and clean though because it had been in storage so let me turn this around I'm gonna kind of give you a look <laughs> that I the best that I can anyway without picking it up and letting everything slide off um, of how we arranged it and you guys can right at least um, and then once once this kind of has a chance to kind of dry out a little bit better I think um, I'll be able to kind of adhere all that stuff down and it could be that I just may go ahead and use some little, little short little finishing nails to kind of place everything down. I may just kind of go ahead and go with it. Because honestly, I think that's the way I'm going to keep this, honestly. I just kind of have to look at it for a little bit and make sure that I'm, make sure that I'm good with it, <laughs> with the place and everything. Okay, I'm going to pick this up a little bit, but my cutting board is obviously going to want to, or my rolling pin is obviously going to want to slide. Um, but that's what, in this whole large piece, I would definitely have to, mount this on the wall secure because this is really heavy so you definitely want to make sure you mount it into the wall with you know into the studs <laughs> so that it's secure but it's an amazing piece that you can put together with you know a family heirloom printed recipe a family photo and then if you have some family items that you have uh, been privileged to have as hand-me-downs you can definitely use those and make a beautiful collage and put your items on display. Don't tuck them away and hide them, but put them on display. And uh, it's a beautiful little touch of family, a beautiful little memory board, if you will, that you can use to display in your home. Okay? All right. I will see you guys Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Central Time for our Christmas in July presentation. I can't wait to see you guys. I have something really fun planned. So come back and see me on Saturday morning. Head over to the Craft from the Clock group and see the next presenter. I'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.